All right, welcome back to a new Touch Designer tutorial. And in this one, we are going to revisit the Audio Reactive Particle Cloud, which is one of my first first tutorials ever. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use the new Particles GPU component to recreate this sort of uh, visual. And we're going to combine it with um, Audio Reactivity, so this chop network, so adding some colors, post effects, and we're also going to look at this cam sequence here, which is a custom component made by Function Store that you can download via the link in the description. But you could also technically use cam blending, which is another tutorial I have linked in the description. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so as always, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything, but I'm just gonna leave my files in here, bypass this audio device out. So I just got a random file here. Lone Pulsar, the song um, from my drive. And I'm going to open my palette here and uh, drag in a few things. So the first one is audio analysis. And then we're going to look at the particles GPU, which is like the main component here, really. And I'm also going to go to my custom components here and use the cam sequencer I have linked in the description. All right, I'm going to connect my audio to the audio analysis. And we're just going to come back to that later on. And now we're going to have a look and focus on this particles GPU. Let's just hit a and then H to center it and we're going to change a few things so first off I don't want bounds for now I'm just going to turn them off I'm going to go to my particle source and select a sphere instead of a rectangle I'm going to go down to 100 points you can uh, mess around with this I'm just going to use a different seed because why not <laughs> I'm just going to go down with my translate here on my material I'm going to change this to line render 1920 by 1080 Fade in 0.1, fade out 0.9. And we're going to come back to these colors. I'm going to already link up this camera here, which I'm going to make orange, and this I'm going to make violet. And then on my forces, I don't want to have gravity here, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And we're going to birth 100 particles. Let's make them smaller. But we're also going to come back to this later on. Like this is sort of a, it's going to be a dynamic audio reactive parameter. I'm going to change all of these to 2 and then minus 2 down here. And uh, on my life variance I'm going to go up to 5 and life down to 15. And actually this, we might want to change this birth. Let's see. Okay. So on my forces I'm going to change this to 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. I'm going to go up my period here to 2. Actually, yeah, I want to birth a thousand here. It's a bit more interesting. Uh, seed, we can just use any. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get rid of this expression. And I'm going to change this to two here, one here, copy and paste, and then point one here. But yeah, you can use any values here. Just see what it, whatever works best for you. It's just a starting point. So I don't really want rotation. I might want to change this to face camera, but it doesn't really matter that much with points. And uh, now I'd say we look at the, the colors and make this pretty before we go on with the audio analysis. I'm also going to add a transform and a, uh, a null to this. So my transform, I'm going to add a black background and call the null BG and display that in the background. And then I'm going to build a little ramp here. So we add a ramp top, a now, convert that into chops, for top to chop, and add yet another now and call that color. And on our render, we're gonna use this as a color lookup. So for now, nothing's happening because the color type is set to source input. So that source input would be here, source color. So we could input that here, but uh, we're gonna work with a lookup on H. So we're going to use H lookup. Now you can already see uh, the color is changing to this black and white gradient. But I want to change that color not to black and white, but maybe to like red and orange. So I'm going to add red, like an intense red, and then a yellow here. Something like that looks kind of nice. You can uh, exchange this with any color. So I just want to uh, copy and paste this, exchange it, and then maybe we can add a green in here and then a blue here. Maybe not as intense. Something like that. And then it's very easy now to switch the colors. I really like that one. Cool. So let's have a look at the audio reactivity. 
we're gonna build a few different strains here based on the kick and the mids so we can uh, turn off the low we can turn on mid and turn on kick I'm gonna change my threshold here to like 0 0.02 my gain to 4 smooth to 0.4 and the threshold to 0.45 on my kick uh, but that, that's and these the other values are really depending on your on your song and your input uh, volume and stuff so make sure you adapt that to whatever input you're using so now what we can do is uh, add a select and copy and paste that and for later we also want to use the audio spectrum so we don't have actually an output of that here so what we can do is we can dive in here look for this audio spectrum with middle mouse add an out job go out again and then we have our spectrum here that we can grab I'm just gonna add a null here for now you can see that works well cool so for the first one here we want to use our mids and for the second one we want to use the kick but again you are free to choose the snare rhythm lows whatever you want to use so this mid chain we are going to use <coughs> to change the speed so we can have a look at that speed parameter here so if I go up with the speed you can see that increases the the animation speed and if I go down we can completely freeze it so you can kind of see this is a nice way to use audio reactivity so to do that we can use this channel and by using a math we can control the ranges so first off I'm gonna multiply this by 3 and then I'm gonna change the range to like 0.5 and 3 add a null call this speed just to be clean here so that we're gonna use the speed on the speed parameter here and now you can see so that's already looking pretty sweet. <clears throat> Another thing we want to do is uh, use the kick to change diff to different cam positions. So to do that, we want to define those camera positions. So I'm going to go on my sequencer here. And um, I am going to rotate this camera around and just see what other cool camera positions I have. What's very important here is to have a null component that uh, defines the, the look at point. So the camera is always looking at the same spot. So let's um, put that on our X form look at. So now you can see if we uh, if we actually append what we where we are right now. You can see we can go between one and the other, and it's always looking at the same point. So it's more like a rotation. So now I'm going to like just turn it around even more and append that. So now we have these three different camera spots. And now I'm going to put that, put that like here somewhere. I don't know. Maybe append that as well. So now you can see we, we're going through these different ones. We can also change it to spline interpolation, which makes it a lot smoother. And now the fun thing is that we can make that movement here move to the sound, to the kick. All right, so we, we get our kick, which is just a value between 0 and 1 here. So uh, to be able to use it, what we should do is add a count. And then we can just add a null to this and call this cam. Select our cam sequencer and use this channel on the select. So now let's listen to the music again. Of course, there's no kick now. <laughs> All right, so right now it's actually a hard cut, right? We're just switching from one to the other, but we can change that by adding a lag here. So the lag chop makes it like a smooth transition from one spot to the other. We can increase the input lag. We don't need output lag because we're only going in one direction. And yeah, that, that looks pretty cool, I think. Um, we can also use a limit here to zigzag between the minimum and maximum. So what we can do here is change this to zigzag, zero and three. Why three? Because we have different, uh, three different uh, camera positions. So now you can see once it goes up to three here, it just goes back to zero. So it's like zigzagging between them and not like jumping back. So whatever works for you, you can see for yourself. And uh, what we can also do f with this uh, kick one other thing actually before, might want to add a math here, another one, oops, there we go, and uh, maybe a constant, let me just bypass this, uh, so a constant, 
Let's change this to like 0.5 and then add a speed. And then we can put that here and combine shops add. So basically now what's happening is that we have a constant rotation from one, one camera to the other. And the kick is just kind of pushing it more forward. So that's whatever you like here. It's one possibility. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can grab this kick and add a math. Change that math range to like 0.5 and 3 or 2, whatever. Um, and then we can again add a null and call this uh, scale uniform. Then we can select our velocity here. Use that whole thing actually. And now you can see based on the kick we have audio reactivity. Again, that's uh, not very smooth, so again, we can add a lag. Might wanna have a bit more output lag or release. So every particle is now responding to the kick in the same way. And if we want some uh, dynamics in there, if we don't wanna have it uniformly scaled, we can use this audio spectrum that we prepared. So what I'm gonna do here is use my custom simple resample component that you can get on Patreon, but it's really just a resample shop. And what I'm doing here is uh, just resampling it to 100 samples, because otherwise it's like 22,050. We don't need that many. And I'm just going to add a lag and a lag per sample. Actually, before that, we should add a math. And again, we can change that range to 0.5 and like 3 or something. Let's add an null to this and call it scale spectrum. And we can now exchange this on here. So now the scale is more dynamic based on, on the audio spectrum. You can make it even more detailed by adding more samples here. And I think that makes it look even more cool. Or cooler. I don't know what this is the right way to say that. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of it for the audio analysis. Um, we can really, uh, you can play around with the spine interpolation being on and off. You can turn off the lag and stuff. So, um, Again, I think there's no kick right now. Yeah. That looks pretty sweet. And again, we can exchange colors. You can have as many different ones as you want. What you could even do is create a uh, switch here. Let's just quickly do that. Why, why the hell not? <laughs> so based on the kick, we could again use a count. Let's put that there. Let's go to count, limit, loop, min, max, and just do one for now. Um, because we just have like two different ones. Let's just add another one. <laughs> Let's just do like this kind of gradient, put that in here, put that in here, use that as a first one. And on my count, I now want to have 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Let's add a null, use that channel on the index. And now we are switching between different color spectrums based on the kick. Cool, right? Um, sweet, so let's do some post-processing for the end here. Uh, one thing would be, you could use a bloom from the palette. If you go to image filters, bloom, that can be fun. Um, not going to do that though. I'm going to add a luma blur and a little ramp here. On that ramp, I'm going to change the output to set resolution only. Make this vertical, push this black into the center. Change my interpolation to hermite, because I think it looks a bit better. Go down of this and go up of the black filter width to 50. No, it's actually it should be. Yeah, wherever there is white, it's going to be blurred by 50. So um, I think that yeah makes it look a bit more organic and sort of realistic in whatever weird way. <laughs> uh, we can also add a mirror here for some classic uh, audiovisual look and rotate that by 90 degrees. And then we get this cool kind of structures Kaleidoscopes and mirrors are a bit overused in uh, audiovisuals, but they're still fun, right? What else can you do? You can work uh, with the hit behavior here that we kind of prepared earlier by setting everything to 2 and minus 2. We can change this to, for example, stick. So it sticks on the uh, edges of the cube. So the cube is only blurred because the, the luma blur. You can also not display the bounds, and it just looks quite interesting. We can also set it to like die on contact, so it's literally... Like whenever they hit the wall, they're going to die. Bounce on contact. Many ways you can work with that, which is kind of fun as well. 
Um, I'm just going to leave it as none. Uh, <clears throat> none. <laughs> you can really mess around with the turbulence. You can add more like, uh, like for example, wind or something. Uh, you could change the color type based on velocity, maybe. So the, when they're moving faster, instead of being older, they're going to use a different part of the gradient, the color. I think H works a bit better, it's just clearer. Change the number of points of the sphere. Whatever you want to do here, really. Uh, also, there's this drag thing, so if you go down with the drag, like that, it's going to be more chaotic. It's different to the, the version before, right? We were working with the drag instead of the speed in the last Particles GPU. But yeah, this is also a parameter to still definitely have a look at. And uh, yeah, change between different scales and have some fun. <laughs> all right. So uh, as always, a huge thanks to all my Patreons. Uh, I, I love you all. I really, really appreci appreciate it that you're supporting me and making this possible. If you want to have some extra content and chat with me and whatever, you can join my Patreon in the link below, and I will see you on the next video.